today on Excellent Leadership with Sam Adeyemi. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My own yoke is easy. So once your yoke is becoming heavy, you realize you have put the yoke of Jesus down. You are now carrying yours. And it's time to change the whole thing back. Bring God on the scene. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Let's go. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We'll title this Managing Stress. Managing Stress. A lot of the health challenges that we have are born out of stress. The human system is created with limits. It is only God that is unlimited in capacity. The human system is created with limits. It can only carry so much. It can only endure so much. And that happens at every level of the human existence. The spirit of man, the soul of man, our emotions, our minds, even the will, the physical body of man is limited in its capacity. So, we are stressed when we have taken on too many responsibilities. We are stressed when our system is overworked, when our system is pushed beyond its limit. Circumstances can also push us beyond our limit. Circumstances can put our minds beyond limit. Circumstances can push our emotions beyond limit, thereby causing stress. The loss of a loved one creates grief, okay, and sometimes fear and doubt. So for some people, sometimes they find that a scenario like that stretches their emotions beyond limit. Sometimes it's the mind that is stretched beyond limit, okay? And sometimes our will, our capacity to act is just impaired. We just find it difficult to summon up our willpower to move on in a particular scenario because we are overwhelmed. So, tragedy, sickness, grief can push somebody's system beyond limit. When we are taken out of our familiar environment, the place where we feel safe, the place where we feel comfortable or confident, it can create anxiety, okay? which eventually can result in a state of stress, being taken out of one's familiar environment. And then one other thing that I realized can cause stress is not having our basic needs met. Every human being has needs. Some are really basic. The need for food is very basic because it affects our very existence. So the absence of food, therefore, over an extended period of time can cause stress. Absence of water to drink, absence of oxygen will cause stress very, very quickly. Not having our basic needs met can cause stress. What we need to admit is the fact that being Christians does not give us immunity against those circumstances. Being Christians 
does not give us immunity against losing loved ones, against losing a job, against having a downturn in business, against failing an exam sometimes. You know, <clears throat> challenges come. Okay, Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulations. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So what is guaranteed is the fact that there is provision in God's system for us to overcome stressful challenges. Amen. So, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, verse 13 says, There is no temptation that has happened to you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. But he will, with the temptation, make a way of escape so that you can bear it. <laughs> That's amazing. So God did not promise you will not have any challenges. Because sometimes people are surprised. <laughs> if it's true that I'm a Christian, why is this happening to me? And sometimes people around, especially Christians, don't make things easy for us. A challenge happens, and then some people around are beginning to think it must be because you did something wrong. Those are equi the equivalents of Job's friends. Excuse me. The fact that somebody is drawing fire sometimes is proof that their spiritual life is hot. They are doing damage to the devil, and the devil is trying to get them distracted. Yeah. So the fact that people around don't understand, the fact that they ask us questions, you know, <laughs> the fact that they don't believe us or they change in their relationship or attitude towards us adds to the stress for Christians. Because some people make it look like something is wrong with you just because you had challenges in your life. So being Christians does not guarantee total immunity from these challenges, but our access to God's grace gives us a guarantee of victory. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57 says, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We have challenges, but even before the challenges came, God gave us victory already. All right? There is a dimension of stress that is normal. There is a dimension of pressure on our system that is normal. In fact, they say it is positive in the sense that you don't get the best out of the human being until the human being is in a little bit of pressure. That's why you record the fastest person in the world, <laughs> sprinter, fastest marathoner, when there's competition, when there are other people chasing, coming close, you know, that's when you get the, the best times that people run. And sometimes I say that we may actually not find the fastest person in the world at the Olympics. The fastest person in the world may be the person that came face to face with a lion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yes, because I've seen people do extraordinary things when there was danger. There was this video, you know, that uh, was on the Internet some months back. And it was the video of a tiny boy, tiny boy. The table, his twin brother pulled on the table. The table fell on him. This tiny thing, I mean really tiny, lifted that table for his brother to get out from under the table. And I mean it was a hit on the internet. Because on a normal day, that, that boy should not have been able to leave that table. But the life of his twin brother was in danger. Something kicked in. Now that is what the doctors tell us about stress. That a little bit of it is necessary because it makes our system to be on the alert. It keeps our system on the alert and activates our systems. But when something is beyond that normal, it begins to damage 
our system. At that point, stress is not good anymore. The major way we are supposed to maintain the balance is when we experience a bit of stress, we're supposed to have some respite. We're supposed to take a break, recoup energy, restore, and then we do it again. Okay? So, um, when our system has no respite from stress, it creates problems. The consistent pressure that doesn't let off creates problems in our minds and in our souls and sometimes even in our spirits. The symptoms of stress include persistent, continuous headaches, high blood pressure, insomnia or sleeplessness, stomach disorders, or stomach upset, or just sometimes a feeling of being overwhelmed. In other words, you should pay attention to your system. My dad taught me to drive. And he had this book on driving that I had read for years before he took me out on the field to learn practically how to drive. One of the things I read in that book that has stayed with me is the need to recognize engine sound. The engine speaks. It has a voice, and you need to understand it. Okay? If you're old enough, you know we learn how to drive with the manual gear shift, okay, with the stick. And you moved the car on J1. And then after some time, you changed to J2 and then to J3. How did you know when it was time for you to change gear to the next one? It was the sound of the engine. Because at some particular point, the engine would begin to strain. Okay? <laughs> Listen. Even if we never drove, drove before, as children, we used to make those sounds. It's amazing. <laughs> as children, we would, we would kick start the car, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> and then we would rev the engine, vroom, 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 and then engage the chair with a click. It's amazing that as children, we knew that with the change of gear or the shift in gear, there was a change in the sound of the engine. So when you stayed on the gear, especially the lower ones, J1, J2, you got to a point where the engine seemed to be screaming, seemed to be complaining. Every human being needs to understand our bodies are machines given us by God at suits that enable us to function on this planet and we need to be sensitive to the voice of the physical body. So when these symptoms begin to show, the signs are there that there is stress and we need to respond to those things. Headaches, high blood pressure, sleeplessness, stomach upset, feeling overwhelmed, stress affects the body, affects the emotions, affects the mind. So let's talk about how to manage stress. Number one, prayer. As a Christian, once you realize you are dealing with something that is beyond your limits, beyond your capacity, bring God in. That was the design in the first place. That's why prayer is so critical for the Christian. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. Once you find yourself lapsing into worry, see, 
Because worry is proof you've taken God out of the equation. Once you find yourself lapsing into anxiety or feeling discouraged, the next thing to do is to pray. Draw on God. Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Charge your batteries. Pray. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Verse 7, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind through our Lord Jesus Christ. I love this. I, this passage of scripture for me is deliverance. Because one place where many people get stranded is in not knowing how to move from a negative emotion to a positive one. And negative emotions are destructive. They trigger the release of hormones in excess, excessive quantity. They make the body to malfunction. How do I move from a negative emotion to a positive one? From anxiety, from fear to peace. It says prayer with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind. John 14, 26, Jesus said, peace I give to you. My peace I live with you, not as the world gives. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Peace has been provided for the Christian. And right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I declare the termination of confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So, pray. Draw on God's power. Draw on God's wisdom. Listen to me. Jeremiah 33, verse 3, God said, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Listen, it's not always that prayer moves God to change your circumstances. In many instances, prayer allows God to change you, to change your perspective. I love the scenario in 2 Kings chapter 6. One of the most beautiful prayers prayed in the Bible. 2 Kings chapter 6, you read down from verse 13. The king of Syria sent soldiers to arrest Elisha, the prophet. And the Bible says that the servant of Elisha woke up in the morning, came out, and screamed when he saw all those soldiers that were there to arrest Elisha. He screamed, Hey, my master, what shall we do? Elisha stepped out saw exactly what the young man saw, and then turned and told the young man, fear not, for those that are with us are more than those that are with them. I love that. That's the position of the Christian. Once you see yourself lapsing into doubt, lapsing into fear, something is going wrong. It's time to deal with it because it's going to create stress for your system. I declare the termination of stress in somebody's life in the name of Jesus Christ. The second thing I'll encourage you to do, take a break. Take a break. Once you realize you're becoming agitated or you're becoming stressed or the signs are showing that there's stress, take a break. Give yourself space for restoration. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus sent his disciples out to heal sick people. The power of God was flowing Massive crowd coming after them. In Mark chapter 6, verse 31, Jesus said to those people, Come aside and rest a while. And he said to them, Come aside by yourselves and rest a while. Take a break. Help me to tell the person sitting next to you, Take a break. Take a break. The signs are showing. Your systems are beginning to break down. Engine noise is there. Complaining. Your emotions are complaining. You are now easily agitated by what would not have agitated you before. Take a break. Give your system time to be restored. Next, seek help from others and, if necessary, from a professional. Seek help from others and, if necessary, from a professional. If you are losing control or you are feeling overwhelmed, please remember that even God himself said, it is not good for man to be alone. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Woe unto him that is alone 
when he falls. It says, for he shall have none to lift him up. Listen, you are not El Shaddai. <laughs> I remember when I had financial stress and I was praying to God and he said, <laughs> the problem is you're trying to solve everybody's problem. Anybody that tells you they have a financial problem, you're trying to solve all their problems. He said, you're pretending to be El Shaddai. You don't realize your name is El Shaddai. You just want to kill yourself. He said, you can't solve all their problems. Ask me before you help people. Ask me. It's not, all, it's not only you that is there that I want to use to help people. Okay? So, very important. And then next, meditate in God's word and let God's life seep into you through his word. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Let life seep into your system. As you take time to dream in the word, to meditate in the word, to get revelations in God's word, words are powerful. Words can build, words can break. The Bible says that. Okay? Words can break a bone. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 4 helps us to realize the power of words. You read verses 20 to 23. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. It says in verse 22, For they are life to those that find them. And what? health to all their flesh. So, take time to meditate in God's word. Take a break and take time to meditate in God's word in his goodness towards you. And finally, maintain an attitude of gratitude. Hallelujah. Maintain an attitude of gratitude. Maintain an attitude of of this, this is very important. We will always talk about Paul and Silas because of what happened to them in Acts chapter 16. They were arrested, thrown into jail. Their feet were put in stocks. <laughs> and everybody was, was, was looking at them. Acts 16 verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises to God. You want to break the hold of stress? Bring God on the scene. Give God some praise. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. You're beginning to feel overwhelmed. It's not as bad as it is. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My own yoke is easy. So once your yoke is becoming heavy, you realize you have put the yoke of Jesus down. You are now carrying yours. And it's time to change the whole thing back. Bring God on the scene. 1 Samuel 30, David and the men with him lost their wives, their children, all of their goods, everything burnt down. And the Bible says David and those men wept all through the night. But somewhere along the line, the one that knew God switched, switched channels. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And the moment he began to do that, what to do came to him. He prayed, Lord, should I go after those people? God said, go ahead, go after them. It's a temporary thing. We can reverse it. David and his men went after them and got back every single person and every single thing that they took. And they got even more from what those people had stolen from elsewhere. Woo! Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am prophesying right here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Just like the rat of man does not walk the righteousness of God, breaking down your system, overworking yourself, is not going to produce what God has promised you. There is therefore now a rest to the people of God. Hallelujah. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ, your season of rest is here. Every form of weariness is lifted. Every weight lifted. Every yoke destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every damage done to the mind is restored. Every damage done to the emotions repaired. Every damage done to the physical body is restored. 
receive your healing now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lift your hand to him. Give him some praise. Give him some thanks. Hallelujah. If someone just broke free right now. Just broke free right now from stress. Okay? Someone just broke free. Give God some thanks and some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our deliverance. In Jesus' name.